So before we proceed to build and start over from one, I was re-rolling 33 Hands of Fate and got Death Coil, which is a really good Shadow CC ability. It's kind of crazy too, because I have a lot of epics, but yeah, we can just dump Sunder Armor or Unstable Affliction. I never use this. And so Warlock Shadow ability, my build is more centered around Shadow Priest Shadow abilities. And this is just for the PvP build, just trying to refine a little bit. I don't care too much about it, but if they do make it more worth to do PvP, then I'll have this build to fall back on. I got another rare as well. I do only have six rares, so it's pretty likely that I get more rares. The chance of getting epics, though, I think, are pretty low because I have eight epics now with the addition of Death Coil. And yeah, this one's pretty sick because it heals you for 300% of the damage done. And I think you can increase that with like REs and talents and stuff. You know, with this build, I have a lot of CC, like too much CC almost. I was actually thinking about dumping Fade. You have to preemptively use it to reduce stun effects. I never ended up using it. Like, I don't think I've used it once in a duel or anything. And it's an epic. I've also been testing Wyvern Sting, and it doesn't seem like it's that useful so i'm gonna drop that as well to free up another talent and epic slot powered fortitude i thought this was rare it's so good i would actually dump curse of agony because i'm always using curse of the elements which reduces shadow resist and increases magic damage taken by 10 percent. it's so good so that's actually really nice a lot of extra stamina from that we got fade again <laughs> Game really wants me to fade, but I just don't use the ability, man. I'm just not good enough to know when to use it. I had to do those before I prestige, so I don't know. I'll probably just include that. Maybe I'll put a timestamp so you can skip over it. And I should also maybe put a timestamp to where I skip over the auctions that I sold. Because, uh, yeah, people were not really caring too much. Bloodforged leggings, I don't know what those are. We got Mystic Scroll, Martial Crescendo, a legendary RE. 54 gold for Bloodforged Starlit Dagger, which had a Mind Melt RE on it, I think. From what I remember, there was only one on the auction house for like 20 gold i bought it and then put my own weapon up because i got a weapon upgrade this thing which is going for really cheap on the auction house because it has a pretty high chance to drop from high risk there's certain gear that's really easy to get when farming in high risk and that's one of the pieces that's really easy to find so everyone's finding it so they're just putting it up for really cheap but yeah just some basic stuff being sold here i got like 40 auctions total sold or something like that maybe it was 30 this time i could actually just go shift click but you can't see that people are buying it that are not me basically like these are real people and i have to do this you guys 27 gold for uh, some re because the whole premise of this series is that i'm not using anything from the cash shop i'm you know making my own money and if i don't you know go through these steps then it just seems kind of pointless to do this whole thing 52 gold holy crap for insignia probably an epic or legendary re but it could have been just a rare that there was none in the auction house 22 gold and 13 and the question is how do we use that gold to make our next prestige the most you know optimal it can be so the first option is we can buy golden skill cards which i'm not going to do it's just a waste of money because they're usually trash with dark moon ticket prizes though we can also buy golden skill cards they're all like five 100 gold plus though this is not really a good use i think arcane explosion is only 250 tickets and it doesn't cost any gold though with my dark moon tickets i can also just buy mage skill cards and i was thinking the one i wanted with this build is cone of cold i already have the skill card for blizzard so cone of cold and blizzard will probably just be my two skill cards it is a thousand tickets and i do have 2k so i could buy another skill card but i don't really know what i'd buy there's not that many options here I have Lucky Ice Lance, so we'll probably get that while leveling. There's also like Deep Freeze, Ice Barrier, some other epic stuff way later, like Frost Nova is epic actually. But those are all 2500, so yeah, we're just gonna go Kona Cold. An epic RE that I thought was gonna be really expensive is Hailstorm. Instead of channeling the entire blizzard, you can cast it. And this is epic. These people are just undercutting each other so hard for this. Because it's like actually something you're gonna want if you have blizzard. And it's really nice. We don't even have to extract it. We can actually just use this insignia at 20 is when you blizzard because we have the skill card for it another thing we can do with our gold is master of profession i still think this is pretty funny they have this on the cash shop it's not pay to win you guys it's pay to reduce the grind of you know maxing out a profession although to be fair you do get i think three skill ups for doing anything with professions so you level them up three times quicker basically in order to choose our starting abilities we could also take the dealer's draft deck but we don't need that with this build which i do like so i'm gonna start the dragon pet and then i could go frostbolt after that but since frostbolt's common i think we're gonna get that as we level up and yeah there is a dragon that is frosty damage so that's what we're going to take that and choosing that's going to take up three of our four starting abilities so i don't feel like this is necessary for this prestige we could also use the aura of xp for 300 gold but we're going to try to get into an aura group i'm just going to buy xp pots i'll start out with three of them and the thing that summons dragons is called a draconic warhorn but there's nothing like that in the auction house and yeah for the tame pet reskins under the vanity tab there's blood soaked vellums for raise undead beastmaster whistles as well i saw a few of those i don't know if i saw any summon stones for i think that's the enslaved demon ability but then 
there's no draconic warhorns. So we're basically at until level 15. We're going to be basically just auto attacking mobs. There's a group that just formed that said they need AOE DPS. I was like, I have Blizzard. And they have a juicer healer apparently. This could be a really fast run. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have some time to choose my starting ability, but like they're pretty antsy. So once I get Tame Dragon, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to try to get like a super optimal second ability. We can always reroll later. We'll get a lot of rerolls. So I'm not too worried about it. Tame Dragon, there we go. And what's our second ability? Garbage. This guy's still spamming for DPS. I'm just gonna try to reroll to see if I can get some better second ability. We're not a full group. Oh god, we're a full group now. Oh, we got it again. Nice. That was fast. That was like... Oh, we got Frostbolt! What are the chances of that, bros? What are the... That's the ability I wanted, dude. Like, I'm sorry to get all hyped, but like... Yo, I was actually gonna go Dealer's Draft deck for Dragon and Frostbolt. It would have cost me 1,200 gold. Like, I wasn't really seriously considering it, but if the Dealer's Draft deck was like 400 gold, I was actually thinking about doing that. So somebody in our group has the aura, and if we pop XP pot here, it only takes... I think it was three quests to get up to 15. After that, we queue up for a random dungeon and get Onan Wheeling Caverns for a little bit, because no one really has their abilities yet. Once we get to around 20, though, it seems like most people in this group have their Aries and gear ready. And we start clearing really fast. I end up not doing that much damage because Hailstorm is actually not that good if your group's doing so much damage. And what I didn't realize is Hailstorm makes Blizzard a smaller area of effect. So I think if I were to press Siege again, which I don't think I'm going to, but if I were to, I would just not go the Hailstorm random enchant and instead just go for things that buff Blizzard's damage. The group leader guy just told me to buy this Ari for Blizzard. And I think like generally it's a good Ari. It will just add some extra damage. But I think since I had Frostbolt, Frost Bomb would have given me more DPS. Oh, big damn. I just don't have big damn because it's like they're all dead instantly. <laughs> Like, dude, this is gonna be a fat pull, and it's like, nope, the mobs are dead. And what kind of sucked about this group from a video perspective is I didn't really have time to try stuff out or even really think about what I was gonna do next. It was just kind of go, go, go. And they were actually able to get 70 with two XP pots. I'm still kind of salty about this, how they kind of left me in the dust. At 60 in Hellfire, they decided to do quests in Hellfire, but most of them had flying mounts. I think there was one guy that didn't. I fell behind on one quest and did not get credit for a mob, and that mob was taking forever to respawn. And so they just kind of left me in the dust, and they didn't even say anything. They it was like f this guy basically they just kept going at the end of the day you know one of them bought the aura so it's kind of like we're all just leeches but at the same time it would not have taken much effort to ensure that everyone's on the same stage of the quest and we could have just done dungeons as well you do like two dungeons and you're 70. hypothetically if i were to make a list of people that if i saw them farming or something i would attack them those guys would be the people that i would you know attack no matter what i have been kind of messing around with the build 2600 dps is not nearly as good of dps as i was pulling my shadow build but there's a few things that i've been kind of tweaking like blizzard costs a lot of mana and i just put talents to reduce blizzard's mana cost with improved blizzard it lowers the mana cost of it by 30%. I'm also using this RE Ice Barrage, which is more single target. I'll do another dungeon where I try a Frost Bomb that is more AoE, and we'll see how that compares. And already, I'm using Frost Bomb for this next heroic. As for my talents, we got Spell Haste, Increase, Increase Spirit and Spell Damage based on Spirit. Frost Bolt deals 15% more damage. Increase Spell Damage by Intellect. And then a lot of Frost Spell Damage stuff that's increasing my Frost Spell Damage. That's a general overview of what's going on. I also found out that Mage Armor can be replaced with Nimble Mind. It's an epic RE that increases increases spell haste and lowers mana cost of abilities so blizzard's only costing 725 mana now which is not that bad it was like 1400 before i started talenting it looks like we got some big aoe here there's a lot of mobs together so i don't know how like you know accurate this is going to be in terms of what we can expect on a normal pull but uh yeah frost on that target there's a blizzard on it too i'm guessing i should be doing pretty good damage I'm lowest on the damage, but I'm 34, 91 DPS. And the shadow spec I was using seems like you can just move quicker too. Like you just walk up, mind flay a bunch of mobs, drop shadow repain, spam mind flay and just keep it moving. Whereas with this, it's like you gotta get the blizzard up, you gotta aim it too, which is annoying to do. But then you gotta also get the frost bomb up on the right target. You gotta pick one that's like in the middle. Then you gotta spam frost bolt at that target. Feels a lot clunkier to play this version of the build. Now I did actually end up getting a lot of rogue abilities. Like I went for sinister strike because there's a frost rogue type of Build that you can go for but it ends up opening up the possibility to get other rogue stuff like eviscerate dispatch and other combo point stuff that's just kind of taking up ability slots and i also went for shadow step because i was thinking maybe the build could go pvp as well and i got some pvp stuff like i got three legendaries that are actually really good in pvp fear which i really like with the frost build actually because if they interrupt it then my shadow spells go on cooldown not my frost skills i also got blink which is obviously really good for pvp and Lay on Hands, which heals for 50% of my health. Way better, in my opinion, than, like, Divine Shield. Where they get you, I think, on Ascension is they make these complex builds that need, like, 
these perfect abilities to complete. This was the RE that I was kind of thinking that I could go towards if I got the right stuff for it. Because I got Cone of Cold, Sinister Strike, Eviscerate, but I need Slice and Dice, and that's where they get you. The build sounds really cool, but you almost have to reroll if you don't get Slice and Dice, and then, you know, you Prestige again, and you buy the Aura and the XP Pots or whatever, you know. It's very sneaky how they extract money out of you. I think the way you kind of be unextractable is you don't go for the really complex builds, but like this one's just not pumping the damage. I'm losing to 1,357 DPS guy. Is that the tank? Yeah, I'm losing to the tank, which is very bad. You may be like, dude, you're playing the build wrong or whatever. And it's like, maybe, but the build I was playing before, I was definitely playing wrong. And I was putting no effort into like the actual playing of the build. And I was still pumping damage. And I was only using two abilities. Oh, and then I also got a dragon, which does do Frost Nova, which I don't have Frost Nova. So that's pretty good. If I was doing PvP, I would actually keep on and stuff. It also does Frost Strike, which does weapon damage plus Frost damage. And then Frost by weapon will slow the target. Not that I really need more slows, but it is Frost damage as well. And alright, so that's the build. This may very well be my last Ascension video this season. Just I feel like the time I'm investing versus the amount of content I'm getting out kind of ratio is not really that good. I don't really think BGs are content or fun. And like the open world PvP is completely avoidable. Just do quests in tier 1 zones. You could encounter players, but you only drop stuff that's in your bags. But if you don't bring anything with you, then you don't drop anything. If they do some kind of like PvP overhaul, then I'll try to refine both the builds to PvP or maybe I'll even do a little PvE. But if PvE is the only thing to really strive for in the game, then I don't think it's really for me.